Ever since skyscrapers really became widespread in the 1920s and 30s, they've been primarily constructed from concrete and steel. And as time went on, glass was incorporated more on the exterior. That's what you'll see in the skyscraper capitals of the world, like Dubai, Hong Kong, Tokyo, and New York City. But in the last few years, there's actually been a movement towards using wood instead to build skyscrapers. So let's talk about it. One of the first widespread examples of modern architecture being built of wood instead of steel is the Wood Cube in Hamburg, Germany. Built back in 2013, at the time it was Europe's first five-story wood building and it was built without any glue or chemicals. Instead, they used dense beech wood plugs to construct the project. This made some headlines in the architectural world, and then we started to see more wooden structures in Austria, Norway, and Sweden, and they've been getting taller. In 2019, we saw the completion of the Hoho Tower in Vienna, which finished at a whopping 24 stories tall, which was unheard of for a wood building. Currently, the world's tallest wooden building is Ascent, a residential building in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that finished in 2022 at 25 stories tall. Looking at it from the outside, you can't really tell it's mostly made of wood, but projects like these are just the beginning of wooden towers compared to some of the projects that developers are proposing right now. One example is Woho, a proposed 29-story residential wooden skyscraper in Berlin, and if completed, this would be the tallest wooden building in Germany. In 2016, Sweden proposed a wooden tower in Stockholm called the Tritopen, which is a 40-floor skyscraper made of cross-laminated timber, or CLT. London then proposed the Oakwood Tower that would reach 80 stories and become the second tallest building in London. People have also called this the Wooden Shard, and it would be a game changer, as London isn't known for building massive skyscrapers. Then Chicago proposed the River Beach Tower, which would come in at a whopping 80 stories tall using a concrete core but mostly being built using hybrid engineered timber. And the biggest one yet, in 2018, Japan announced W350, a proposed 70-story wooden skyscraper in Tokyo, with a projected cost of 5.6 billion US dollars. Now, don't get your hopes up. This tower isn't set to complete until 2041. We've already seen some wooden towers go up, several in Germany and Scandinavia, but until these recent proposals, wood construction hasn't been anything close to the same level as concrete-based skyscrapers under construction in New York City, Chicago, or Miami, to name a few. So what's up with all these cities building wooden towers? By the way, if you're enjoying this content, make sure to sign up for our email list for cool projects, fun updates, and interesting content that isn't on the YouTube channel. The link for that is in the description. One reason is many cities in Germany and other European countries are currently adopting new policies to incentivize timber construction, like offering subsidies for certain amounts of wood used in a building. And as technology progresses to make wood buildings more efficient, building codes are being updated to allow for taller wood structures to be built. Many cities have height limits on buildings made primarily of wood, and those limits are being increased, which is why we're starting to see more wooden buildings being proposed, and that's also why they're getting taller. Now, the big question. Why are these cities turning towards more wood construction, especially since it's more expensive to build with? One really big reason behind the push for more wood construction is for environmental reasons. Did you know that the construction industry alone accounts for almost 40% of the world's carbon emissions? Let me tell you, I definitely did not. The concrete industry alone makes up 8% of the world's carbon emissions. And do you know what uses a lot of concrete? That's right, 
construction. Concrete production also takes up to 40 to 50 billion tons of sand each year. And even though there's a lot of sand in the world, it's a limited resource. During the last 30 years, concrete production has quadrupled. And it's not just concrete, but also cement, asphalt, and glass production that all use an incredible amount of sand that has to be mined from beaches and riverbeds. Now, the interesting thing about using wood as a construction material is that not only does it reduce carbon emissions, it's actually carbon negative, meaning it takes away more carbon than it produces. This is because trees literally store carbon dioxide inside them through photosynthesis, so they can grow. And when we use wood to build skyscrapers, we're literally taking CO2 that's stored in trees and locking it up in a building's structure because these trees have already absorbed the CO2 from the atmosphere. There have actually been several studies suggesting that if we consistently use more wood as a primary building material, we can make a significant reduction in carbon emissions from construction. Aside from the environmental benefits of using wood, it's also an incredibly sophisticated building material. Advancements in producing cross-laminated timber, aka CLT, have made wood a very structurally sound building material, and these massive wooden panels can often replace slabs of concrete in construction projects because it has such a high load-bearing capacity. Now, I'm not talking about your regular old wooden planks. Cross-laminated timber is a hybrid engineered wood designed to have the best of both worlds. It's sturdy and load-bearing like steel, but it's much more lightweight. Using mass timber products, like CLT, as a substitute also allows for more prefabrication, meaning building parts are assembled in production plants rather than on site and shipped to the site, allowing construction to happen much quicker. One timber building that got a lot of recognition for this is located in Norway, called Mjostarnit, and it was completed in 2019. Before Ascent finished in Milwaukee in 2022, Mjostarne was the previous record holder for the world's tallest timber buildings. It's 18 stories, built of cross-laminated timber that we talked about, and it was built using a modular approach with prefabrication. So construction took place from start to finish in just 10 months. Before this, a highly publicized wood building was Vancouver's Brock Commons Tallwood House, opened in 2017 as a student housing building. It's 18 stories and took 70 days to construct from prefabricated components. Okay, I know the wood buildings seem great, but I'm sure we're all wondering the same thing. What about the fire hazard? Yes, wood obviously burns, but wood burns slowly and in a highly predictable manner. And when it comes to materials like cross-laminated timber, the exterior layer might get charred in a fire, but underneath the charcoal, the wood remains undamaged and structurally sound. This kind of timber is not like your average firewood. It's much denser and much more fire resistant. Where you have to be careful is with a lot of the synthetic materials and lighter soft woods being used in houses these days that burn dangerously fast. It might be cheaper than real wood, but it's the synthetic stuff and the light frame timber that is more of a safety hazard. The thing with using wood in construction is that you can't build as tall as you can with steel and concrete. Light frame construction with wood is typically associated with low-rise residential buildings and houses. But if we look at a heavy, solid timber like CLT in these wood skyscrapers, it's easier to use on larger industrial and commercial buildings. But technology still wouldn't allow us to build any mega-tall skyscrapers out of wood. At least, not yet. And wood buildings don't eliminate concrete outright. They often have concrete in the foundation and in the core of the building, but the majority of the construction material is wood. So overall, wood skyscrapers use much less concrete than traditional buildings. 
A group of researchers at Yale University did a study on the feasibility of replacing concrete with wood, and they actually found that by the year 2050, about 90% of new buildings could be made of wood, which could prove extremely beneficial since by that time the global population is projected to reach 9.3 billion people. If we continue to build everything with steel and concrete, it will become very difficult to keep up with demand in a world of 10 billion people, not to mention the environmental consequences of using much more concrete than we are right now. Timber could be a game changer when it comes to how fast you can build while having fewer environmental consequences. Now, you might be thinking, okay, harvesting wood sounds great and all for environmental purposes, but then what about deforestation? Well, places like Germany, Sweden, Norway, and actually Europe as a whole are pretty good about deforestation. Many European nations are actually increasing the number of trees, not decreasing. This is due to multiple factors like strict regulations requiring more trees to be planted than harvested, laws preventing imports of unsustainable timber, and heavy investments into research on sustainability. And as more trees are cut, even more trees are being planted. Researchers have even found that more wood can be harvested without compromising the sustainable growth of forest resources over the next 30 years. Now, this is just Europe. In certain non-European countries, yes, deforestation and illegal logging is a huge concern. But as this happens, groups like the United Nations and World Economic Forum are introducing more incentives to reduce deforestation in countries where it's a problem. The consensus seems to be that if we're going to encourage more wood harvesting in certain countries, this needs to be accompanied by strong legal and political commitment to sustainable forest management. These are just some of the ambitious projects aiming to use timber for these modern new skyscrapers. Architects, engineers, and developers are still studying the implications and structural integrity of building such tall buildings with wood. But as timber production advances, I think we'll start to see more of these wooden structures in a more sustainable future as we approach a world of 10 billion people. What do you think of this? Let us know in the comments down below. For more videos on fascinating international development projects like these, be sure to subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.